In 1961, Gambino family mobster Neil De La Croce was viciously beaten by members of the Gallo crew. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the time when Neil De La Croce was savagely beaten by members of the Gallo crew. At the start of the 1960s, Profaci family mobsters Larry and Joe Gallo, along with their followers, rebelled against family boss Joseph Profaci. The conflict produced several famous mob incidents, such as the Gallo crew kidnapping high-ranking members of the Profaci family in February 1961, the murder of the greatly feared Joseph Joe Gelli Gielli. After his disappearance, his clothes with dead fish were found in a car near the Gallo crew's headquarters, providing the inspiration for the famous Sleeps with the Fishes seen in The Godfather. Larry Gallo surviving a strangulation attempt at the Sahara Lounge. Again, another inspiration for a movie scene, this time in The Godfather Part 2. But what is rarely discussed is the time when Gambino family captain Neil De La Croce was beaten by members of the Gallo crew. In 1961, Aniello De La Croce was a captain in the Gambino crime family. After the murder of Albert Anastasia in 1957, De La Croce sided with Armand Tommy Raver against Carlo Gambino, who had been installed as the boss of the family on a provisional basis. Tommy Raver was ultimately murdered, as I have covered in a previous video, and De La Croce's rebellion against Gambino ended, and he settled his differences, as seen in the following FBI file. Informant noted that De La Croce had been able to get himself reinstated with the Gambino contingent, who had taken over the Anastasia family. With Tommy Raver dead, his crew was split between Neil De La Croce and Anthony Rizzo, who both became captains. Neil De La Croce's crew included the likes of Joseph Vincent Bisogno, Carmine De La Croce, Anthony Tony West de Lutro, Cataldo Charlie the Animal de Lutro, Carmine Charlie Waggons Fatico, Donato Danny Waggons Fatico, and Anthony Fatandi Reggiano, and then, on September the 21st, 1961, Neil De La Croce was dining in Luna Restaurant when he entered into an altercation with members of the Gallo crew, which escalated and turned violent. And Gambino captain De La Croce was subjected to a vicious beating. As reported in one FBI file, on September 21, Aniello De La Croce was dining at the Luna Restaurant in Lower Manhattan when he was suddenly attacked by a gang of Gallo strong arm men beaten and kicked unmercifully. He suffered severe injuries and reportedly would have been killed if some of Vito Genovese's soldati, soldiers, had not intervened and stopped the attack. Sources indicate that the Gallo crew member who was mainly responsible for viciously assaulting De La Croce was a mobster called Larry Big Lollipops Karna. Larry Karna had a younger brother called Joseph Junior Lollipops Karna. Both brothers were in the Gallo crew and allegedly earned their nicknames as their father, known as Senior Lollipops, owned a Brooklyn luncheonette called Lollies. In a 1970 public hearing by the Joint Legislative Committee on Crime, General Counsel Edward J. McLaughlin quizzed De La Croce on the beating he had received. The details on the hearing were published in the New York Times. The newspaper reported... Mr. McCoughlin said De La Croce had been severely beaten in 1961 by Larry Karna, a member of the Gallo Brothers gang. He then said Larry Karna was later shot and wounded. Wasn't that a result of the beating you received? It is true that on December 11th, 1961, Larry Big Lollipop Karna was indeed shot and wounded, nearly three months after the De La Croce attack. As one newspaper reported, in a renewed attack on the upstart Gallo mob by conservative underworld elements, 
half a dozen shots were pegged from a passing car at three Gallo henchmen late yesterday. They were loading paint into one of their own cars on a crowded street in the Red Hook section of Brooklyn. As the shots popped, the three fled into the paint store. Thanks to spectacularly bad marksmanship, only one of the three was nicked in the left ankle. One shot wounded an 18-year-old passerby. The other four shattered the window of N. Pinchett's paint store at 312 Court Street near DeGraw Street where the three Gallo associates were cowering. You better beat it, the Gallo casualty Larry Big Lollipop Karna 30 told his associates as the assailant's dark blue car sped off. Larry Karna was quizzed by the police while in hospital, but in true mob fashion refused to provide any information to the authorities. As one newspaper reported, Karna, who gave his address at 51 President, wouldn't help the cops. Propped on one elbow, smoking a cigarette in the hospital emergency room, he told Lieutenant Victor Kaufman of the Brooklyn South Homicide Squad, Don't bother me, I have nothing to say to you. However, it appears that the shooting of Karna had nothing to do with being revenge from Neil Delacroix, but just another shooting in the gallo profacci conflict. One FBI file states, On December the 11th, Larry Big Lollipop Karna was wounded in the ankle, leaving a Brooklyn paint store, and three days later, Salvatore Di Simone was critically injured by two bullets that cut him down in front of his candy store on President Street. Larry Gallo claims that Persico later admitted to him that he had been responsible for the shooting of Di Simone, and another source advised that Persico had been severely criticised for cowboying it, in that he had wounded Karna only slightly and had made no attempt to finish the job he had started. Interestingly, sources also indicate that the Gallo crew were backed in their rebellion against Joe Profacci by bosses Carlo Gambino and Tommy Lucchese. It can therefore be speculated that this may well have been the reason that there was no reprisals for the vicious assault on Gambino captain Neil Delacroix. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.